welcome back to Nightline on 9 o'clock hour. If you've been with us the first hour, you've really heard some good things happening and some the lives of the ladies that are on with us tonight. And uh, Tony, I'm going to let you introduce your friend here that you were telling me about that you wanted to come and you had heard some things about her that were awesome. So tell us a little bit about her. Tonight. Well, Luann. Luann. Luann, I... Um, Bada. In case I didn't tell, see the first yeah, hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, met Luann at, you know it, you guessed it, yeah. Hope Church. <laughs> um, and she actually, you came up to the info desk, and I guess you were looking for me, and someone said, there's a lady named Luann looking for you. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then anyway, they brought you to introduce to me, and yes. I was so glad to be able to meet you in person. Yes. Because um, there's so many at Hope now that were, you know, you mm. could go there and not meet. I know. So, but I'm just thankful that you were here tonight and been able to share uh -huh. in I our first it. hour. So if, if you missed it, after it's over, you can go uh, on Facebook and rewind it and watch it or... You can watch it again tomorrow morning. And if you were here the first <laughs> hour, you got to hear uh, Gwenna Buckner talk about her sister, Linda. And there, we can't talk enough about our sisters. We love them mm, so yes. much. And her daughter's here with us. To, her, yeah, her daughter's here with us tonight. And uh, she's going to be uh, coming and doing some more singing here tonight. And then we're going to do an interview with her. But, you know, I was just thinking as Gwenna was talking about her sister, how much I love my sisters. There were five of us girls. We didn't have any brothers. We had all sisters, and there was five of us, and all of mm -hmm. us were like two years apart. And, you know, you think it'll always be that way. You'll have them around forever because you never think about yeah. them ever going anywhere else when you're young. And I remember all five of us girls went to live with our grandmother when I was only eight years old. So... I was in the middle, so we, we had them from, my baby sister was only three, and then I had another sister that was five. I was seven. Erlene was, uh, nine, she was nine years old, and then Edith was 12. Well, my grandmother had already raised 10 children and uh, saw five of them die. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't know. People were stronger than we are nowadays. I think so. And she, she birthed all of her babies herself except for three of them. Now, how she did that, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't want to try that one. You mean at home? Yeah, at home. Okay, I was like, well, didn't she birth all ten of them? I <laughs> well, I mean, you know, by herself. I was just talking to uh, her sister this week, and her sister told me that. We've been more strong back then, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, <laughs> I lost my sister uh, about... 11 months to death and and it hurt I tell you what I screamed for two days and finally I said you know she's not coming back but I'll go to her one day mm -hmm. I'll go to her and I lost another sister I mean um, she had taken too much medicine one night and she didn't wake up the next morning so mm -hmm. I know what it is to lose a sister so mm -hmm. you got to stay with us tonight and uh, we're going to be praying at the end of the hour and if, if you've got a loved one that you've been in grief over just know God can be there through your grief I mean we are going to grieve I've grieved and then sometimes I wonder how I go on I, I, I get real happy and laugh and I think well why should I laugh? My sister's gone. Well, she's in a place where we're all going to join her one day. Mm -hmm. And that's what you can do with your loved ones. Tony, were you going to read the scripture? Or? I can read it. Yes, it comes from John 4, 18. And it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts mm -hmm. out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And, you know, sometimes when you do lose a family member, you can kind of get in your own head about, mm -hmm. like, next thing you know, you have another loved one that's got a cold and the enemy's thrown out lies at you that, oh, they're gonna, you're going to lose them too. And you can, the fear can just begin to take hold of your life if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. But we know that perfect love and the love from Jesus Christ cast out that fear. And that's why it's so important to be in the Word daily because the Word is our weapon. And when the Word becomes your weapon and you, it's in your heart, guess what? When that Word is in your heart, then it can flow out of your mouth. And you can easily combat when the enemy is throwing lies at you. When you catch them and hold on to them, 
then you've given him authority. But when you speak the word of God over the lies that the enemy tells you that you're going to lose another loved one or this sickness is, you know, going to take your life, you speak the word of God. When your body hears what your brain thinks and your words are saying, there's power in that. And that is your weapon. So I encourage you tonight, if you don't know all the scriptures, you know, start with Psalms 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you know how and why you get to abide? Because you dwell with Him. And when you dwell, that means to remain. It means to spend time with Him. So when you begin to dwell with Him in the secret place, which could be your car, the shower, wherever that is, then he, you get to abide in His shadow. And so... If you know nothing, learn that one. Put it on a post-it note. Memorize it. Speak it over your life daily. And if you need prayer, call in. We want to pray with you. Um, We're going to have Gwenna and Laura both sing Run to the Father, and then we're going to be talking more with Laura.
run to the Father. I don't know where I'd rather run than to the Father. <laughs> if you're just joining us tonight, we've had a great night with the ladies' night. Um, we've had uh, a friend of mine, Gwenna Buckner, and her daughter has come with her, Laura Brown Oliver. And um, Laura, let's introduce Laura here. Thank you for being with us here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. You're just the prettiest thing. <laughs> my goodness. Pretty You'll girl. You'll make my head big. <laughs> like your little hat, too. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Linda sang, Gwenna sang, mm -hmm. and now Laura no, sings. Sing. <laughs> yeah. You hope you have a little girl, a boy, one day that's going to sing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> They're going to sing. Oh, <laughs> oh no hands up the butt. They're going to yeah. sing how. Oh, so yeah. how long have you been singing? And how did oh, you really gosh. get into the singing part of it? I mean, I'm sure it's like a similar story to my mother. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah mean, and your daughter will be telling it, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I mean, I can remember being a small child and standing up and we did like a Mother's Day song in church mm -hmm. with yeah. me, you and grandmother and Aunt Linda. Yes. And so, I mean, as far as I can remember, I've been singing since I could walk. So, yeah. Well, Tony, you have too, haven't you? Yeah. I learned a little um, bit about your singing when you were you. I, I, yeah, so <laughs> mom and dad and my sister would sing together. And for some reason, I did not get invited into the trio. <laughs> so I was the was solo no artist. <laughs> um, so I would come up and I had a puppet and his name was Coco. And so mom and dad always made me learn chapters of the Bible. So Coco, <laughs> I was a ventriloquist as well. Oh, so Coco amazing. would say the scripture and then yeah. I would sing. And I always sang, I had a few songs in my back pocket, but one of them was Jehovah Jireh. Oh, yeah, and yes. so I had Coco and the mic, and back then we didn't have cordless mics. Mm -hmm. And I would sing and I would dance, Jehovah Jireh, it's my provider. I okay. that song. Well, I got tripped up in that cord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fell to the oh, ground. My, my feet kept dancing <laughs> and I came right back up. <laughs> oh, my so anyway, yes, it's when it's in your genes, you just do it and yeah. run with it, right? Oh, oh yeah. you do. So you do. that's so neat. You know, I was talking about, you know, legacy and you're married now and having that opportunity to take the roots and the seeds that have been sown in you and you and your husband now get to continue that legacy with your family. Mm -hmm. So that's so awesome. And I know that you graduated with a business marketing degree from Anderson yeah, University. I did. That's where my son is now. Oh, really? Oh, He's exciting. in his second semester there. And um, so, you know, we're just trying to still get the feel of, you know, what college looks like because oh, he's yeah. very new to it. But um, how are you taking that degree to the marketplace and allowing that to be your mission field? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I feel like, and I've talked about this so many times, you know, Anderson's a Christian university mm -hmm. and we have the opportunities to be in uh, Bible classes and we talk about how that relates to our major and right. stuff like that all the nice. time. But, you know, in the business world, you definitely would not think that <laughs> there's about zero Christianity throughout anything that you do. But the way I like to look at it as is they may not be able to see that in my actual work. I do licensing and I do uh, social media for toys and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but they see it through me mm -hmm. and they see mm -hmm. how I present myself and how mm -hmm. I speak to people and how I treat people and how I walk in and that's treat right. everybody in my daily life. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing with, I mean, everybody can use that on a daily yes. basis, whether it's the business field, whether it's nursing or mm -hmm. teaching, mm -hmm. you know, right. I mean, it's all in the way that you hold yourself and what you put forth because I could be going in there and yeah. speaking very ugly to people <laughs> and treating them terribly but you know I like to try this on the brighter side and maybe if they come up to me and why are you so nice why are you so nice why do you smile every day mm. well I've got something to smile for yeah. <laughs> I'm alive Jesus loves me like yeah. it's in your heart yeah, yeah it's, it's in, in it's in my heart and yeah. so mm -hmm. I mean that's just how I look at it and that's how I try to teach my days as being in the business world. And it's contagious you know, when yeah. you are kind. It's so easy to be kind. It takes so much more effort to be unkind. Yeah. And when you can yes. be kind and allow, you know, him to shine through you and then someone be like, oh, there's something different about her. Yeah. To know that the difference is him living in you. Yeah. What is that song like? 
No, you're a Christian. By your love, oh. by your <laughs> love. Yeah, like that's like the kind of thing that you got to think of. Like people will know you're a Christian, and they know like you're um, very loving and everything like that, um, just by the way you present yourself. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you're kind to others, and you're out, you know, and you're around people, you never know what is going on in their life That's right. mm -hmm. and what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And your kind word might be something that just oh. ministers to yeah. them, yeah. you know, and so. Someone could be yeah. depressed, um, you know, having the worst day of their life, mm -hmm. but you hold the door open to them and say, That's hey, right. how you doing? Glad to see you. Like, yeah. what might company make the whole day. do you work for? I work for Sunny Days Entertainment. We're a toy manufacturing company oh, in Simpsonville, oh. South Carolina. Wow, wow. So, yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun job being yeah. with toys, fidget toys, play tents all day long. And you market that? Oh, so yeah. So you're, you're one of the marketers? Yep. yep. I do I run four different social media platforms for oh. four different toy brands. Mm -hmm. um, and I do all kinds of licensing um, with Barbie, Hot Wheels. Ooh, <laughs> all fun. That stuff. Yeah, it's super fun. But. I played with Barbie. So you, would, a long I'm sorry. Time. Would, you know, would you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you know the newest toys then? The, do, would you know that? Like, if a well, new toy comes out, do you guys? Oh yeah, get that's it? that's our job. But well, um, if a new toy comes out, we're definitely on. That's on our radar. <laughs> oh, okay, so gotcha. that's um, right. if okay. it comes out, I'll probably know about it. But that's oh, fun. Oh, yeah. What a neat job. Yeah, it's, a great great job. job. <laughs> it's so fun. It really is. A job where you play with toys every day. Right. Yeah. 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 I know. It'd I'm be like the... Tony. Put the Barbie <laughs> yeah. down. Seriously. Like this would be my excuse as an adult to still dress my Barbies up. Do you remember putting your Barbies up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely remember. I remember playing with Barbies <laughs> as a kid and everything. I guess it stuck with me because I, I had Barbies to, you know. out till I was like 13. Really? And I was not ashamed. I had a whole separate room that was like Barbie land. Yeah. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. And then your daughter got them. Out. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. She started realizing she was getting older and she would like Let's close it. What's in that room? Nothing. Nothing's in that room. Because she still enjoyed Even to, sometimes she'd be like, Mom, I miss my Barbie. Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> She's almost 16. Um, but you're also an artist. Mm, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just been kind of a hobby uh, for a very long time. I remember always drawing pictures for Christmas presents when I was young and couldn't oh. afford anything, you know, five years old. Everybody gets a picture from me. <laughs> that's, um, true. That's, yeah. true. that's true. That's so, true. Did you keep them all? I did. She, okay. did. she did. Uh -huh. She did. She was showing my husband them the other day. <laughs> she was like, this is what Laura drew for me when she was 10 years old. This I'm, was my Christmas present. I'm one of those parents. I keep everything. Oh, you know? yeah. 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 So, no, it's um, it's always been a love of mine. Um, there's several different times where I would say that I'm pretty proud of my work that I did. Um, I had the opportunity with my church, Springwell Church, um, to paint a mural in our special needs room. It's a one um, I worked in the children's department for a long time, and we did all of the dances and sang mm -hmm. for the children, and sang worship songs for them, and so. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to paint the mural in the special needs room, which is awesome. They just started it. There's so many kids wow. in there. Yeah. There's everything that they could possibly need to help them mm -hmm. truly kind of understand and learn um, mm -hmm. about Jesus. And brighten and so, their time there. Yeah. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I love doing wow. that. And I've done several things for my church. Um, just last summer, their kids camp, um, I did a speed painting. Um, yeah, yes. uh, four feet tall in three minutes. I had it, three minutes of one song to paint it. Oh, wow. yeah. It was oh, one insane. Of those. Oh, yeah. Nice. It was it's hanging on the wall now in the children's department, but those are two of the like. That's great. Two of the big That's things. That's so cool to watch. Yeah. I've been in services to where yeah. you had, there's an artist on yeah. the stage and, you know, they're painting whatever the Holy Spirit kind of yeah. gives them during that yeah. song. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's really crazy because, you know, you feel like sometimes the way people preach, um, you feel like you have to preach sometimes, but I don't think that's necessarily true, not always. Mm -hmm. Sometimes painting, mm -hmm. painting in front of the service is what made someone feel something and made sure. them want to come to the Lord. Or mm -hmm. going into um, the special needs room at my church and they saw this painting and they, they felt something or they mm -hmm. felt the love that somebody wanted to give back. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just the little things. Now you got married last year, didn't you? I did. And I just saw him before the program started. He's cute. He's cute. I, I he's think cute. he's cute too. <laughs> 
Well, no. how's it going? It's going great. Mm -hmm. um, He's from where? He is from South Africa. Now, we want to know how you <laughs> met him. Oh, my gosh. Um, I always, I, I don't think it's like the most crazy, beautiful story ever. Um, we met on this app. It's called Upward. It is a Christian, oh. like, young people mm -hmm. dating app in mm -hmm. a sort. Um, we met on there. It's always funny to me because I think he was like perfect right at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, young women were all yes, in. Yes, we're like, looking. <laughs> like we always, we dream of getting married yeah, and we true. dream of this Absolutely. day of like um, marrying a man. And so for me, I met him on this app and we he went on a date and he met me outside and it was like, oh, okay. Like, and he was like, let me open the door for you. And he was so, so a gentleman. So, such was a gentleman. he living here during that time? Mm -hmm. He was, was living in okay. South Carolina, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, well, that's you know. so awesome. Well, congratulations yes. to you guys. Yes. Yes. May the Lord bless you with just, um, you. just you. a blessed family uh -huh. and just to continue to carry on the traditions yeah. and, and loving him, yeah. putting him first. Um, we're going to have um, them sing. We're going to give them a second to prepare for that. But again, if you have a need, we want to pray over your needs this evening. Um, it's been so nice to just have women together and to be able to just share our hearts together. So we've got one more song, and it is just a classic, Amazing Grace. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are wrapping up our evening of ladies night. It's always, like I said, I love um, just women. I, You know, this mom is our sick. We've just completed our sixth year. This is February. Mm -hmm. And in February, six years ago was our first nightline that we had with my cousin who passed away. Lori, she was on there. 
and she ministered and she looked into that camera yes. and she ministered and after she just cried she was like Tony I need prayer I'm hurting really bad this evening um, but she just was touching lives wow. to the very end yes. and so yes. I'm just thankful to WGGS mm -hmm. and our crew here um, just such amazing people that we get to come in and work alongside with to make this night just yes. possible and to have a platform to be able to share the love of Christ is nothing I ever thought mm -hmm. that I would have. I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful for you guys that watch and to be able to do this with you mom and to just have wonderful ladies and men yes. that we get to meet through this platform is just so amazing. As a little girl, I never thought that I would have this opportunity. So thank you to the crew yes. and all those that work so hard Very every good. single week um, that make it easy for us to come in here and, and host this show and host the Lord well and host the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. here. Um, so thank you all for making You're it welcome. easy too that because it's people like you who um, keep it going for us, you know. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being willing to come in here and share your heart and yes. how the Lord has just worked in your life and really encourage. Yes. That's what we want to do and our main goal for this night when mom and I come in is to hope that the Lord can use us just like you were mm -hmm. saying, Laura, just you know, it might just be a smile or a word or, you know, just a look of kindness that you can give someone that can brighten their day. So I encourage you to think about the words that you speak before you speak them and, and just ask yourself, is this something that can uplift or encourage someone? Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to pray over us tonight, over those who have called in and those that are watching. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just Lord, thank Lord. you for this thank opportunity Jesus. to um, thank you, just thank love you Lord. in this way, to thank lift you up, to magnify thank your name. Thank you. We thank you, Father, that we get to abide yes. under your shadow. Yes. I just lift up those who are watching tonight with needs, Lord, that need encouragement yes, tonight, Jesus. that feel like giving yes, up, Lord. Father. I pray that you would just uh, reveal to them who mm -hmm. you are, that you are their king, and that you see them as a prince and a mm -hmm. princess, and that you're the Lord of lords and the king of kings. And I just pray, Father, that sickness be healed in the yes, bodies tonight, yes, that Lord. finances be met, yes. that relationships be healed. Yes, and for that one person that's looking for that spouse, mm -hmm. I just pray that, Lord, you would just call that person forth into their life and it would be a marriage ordained by you. In Jesus' name, we thank you for watching tonight. We bless you and tune in again next week.